Peace and blessings to the 12 tribes of Israel. Today I'm going to deal with a topic called who are the dogs in the Bible? Okay, because uh, when you read Revelations 22, 15, it tells it, it, it talks about dogs. And then you're like you're scratching your head thinking, what dogs is the Bible talking about? OK, so I'm going to do a, a Bible share or Bible study on the term dogs in the Bible and how it is used. OK, so let's so first of all, let's go to the scripture in Revelations, Revelations twenty two fifteen. For without our dogs and sorcerers and whoremongers and murderers and idolaters and whosoever love it and make it alive. Right. So it's saying uh, outside of the city. Right. Because if you read above, in fact, let's read above to 14 to give context. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life and may enter through the gates into the city. It just means the city of heaven. Yeah. The kingdom of heaven for without are dogs and sorcerers and whoremongers, whoremongers and murderers and idolaters and whosoever love it and make it a lie. Right. So outside of the gate are dogs, sorcerers, whoremongers. So the dogs uh, can be right. The dogs can be divided into two categories. So you're going to have the Gentile nations and evildoers of Israel, right? So Israelites that are evildoers and the Gentile nations, okay? Uh, the sorcerers would be those who do witchcraft, people who do, uh, you know, worship other gods and, and basically do, uh, you know, the charts and stuff like that. And whoremongers, uh, so men that, that go go that go from woman to woman to woman to woman to woman, he always has a new girlfriend, he always has a new... Uh, bed friend. Um, so that those are whoremongers and murderers. So murderers would be people that kill, use their hand to kill innocent flesh, right? To spill innocent blood, right? So those would be like a, people, women who commit abortions and men who, men and women who go around killing people, okay? Idolaters would be those that worship other gods and whosoever love it and make it a lie. So if you if you make make up a lie or you're deluded into thinking that if you're in the Christian church, that what you what your what your pastor is saying is truth is truthful. And you delude yourself into thinking that your pastor has a point when he doesn't because he's not proving it in the Bible. The Bible says, hold fast, prove all things. In Second Thessalonians 5.21, it says, prove all things, hold fast to what is good. So you, you are supposed to prove all things via Isaiah 28, which is putting the precept upon precept, line upon line, here a little, there a little, precept upon precept, line upon line, upon line here a little, there, there a little. That's how you prove anything in the Bible, right? So if your pastor's not proving what he's saying, then he is lying, okay? So those that love the prosperity gospel, you've deluded yourself into thinking that that is the right gospel to follow, Right? Those people that believe in a victim gospel, you know, where they're always the victim and Satan is always like the evil person that is persecuting them. And and, and the person who's, who's, who's in the church going for the blessing is always the victim, you know, when they are causing other people to sin, right, which is wicked, right? They are not only wicked themselves, they're unrepentant sinners and they're causing other people to sin, right? And those who make it a lie. So if you have a, a doctrine which which is about lying, being a false witness, um, lying about the gospel, lying that Christ only died for the sacrificial law when he died for the whole law. He fulfilled the whole law. He died for the whole nation of Israel. People who lie and say Christ died for all nations. Christ died for every single person on the planet. And. And that's not true. People who lie and say, oh, is the Lord is most high is not dealing with Israel anymore. He's only dealing with all people of the earth. No. Christ only died for the lost sheep of the house of Israel. So that's making a lie. So those who make it a lie will not inherit the kingdom of God. I mean, it couldn't be any clearer than that. Right. So as I said at the beginning, so when the, the Bible talks about dogs, it's talking about two categories of people. So you have your evildoers, which are your sinners, unrepentant sinners, the unrighteous who are Israelites. And also it's talking about the Gentile nations because the Lord is only dealing with Israel right now. Uh, and 
and we will deal with the Gentile nations in the kingdom to come. OK, so let's now deal with the Gentiles and we are going to go to Matthew 15 and we're going to read from 21 to 28. So we're going to go to Matthew 15 and we're going to read from 21 to 28. And Jesus went thence and departed into the coast of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a woman of, of Cana, Canaan came saying, have mercy on me, O Lord, thou son of David. My daughter is grievously vexed with a devil. But he answered her, not a word. And his disciples came and besought him, saying, send her away, for she cried after us. But he answered and said, this is Christ answered and said, I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. So Christ only came for the nation of Israel. 25, then came she and worshipped him, saying, Lord, help me. But he answered and said, it is not meet to keep to take the children's bread and to cast it to dogs. Right. And he said, truth, God, truth, Lord, yet the dogs eat of the crumbs which fall from their master's table. Right. So she said, truth, Lord, yet the dogs eat of the crumbs which fall from the master's table. Then Jesus answered and said unto her, O woman, great is thy faith, be it unto thee, even as thou wilt. But her daughter was made whole from that very hour. So, so Christ healed her daughter because her faith was strong. But however, Christ said that he only came for the lost sheep of the house of Israel. So she acknowledged that that was indeed the truth. And she acknowledged that that as as dog is is another is, is like the level that is under the Israelites, because Christ, because the Most High put the Israelites first. He's only dealing with Israel first. And in, in the kingdom to come, he will deal with the Gentiles because the Lord has put the children of Israel above all nations. Right. So she's just basically saying, yeah, I acknowledge the truth and Christ. So Christ acknowledged her faith. Uh, he admired her faith. And therefore, he healed her daughter because she actually begged him. Right. So you can have compassion. Right. So the Most High can still have compassion. Right. But that doesn't take away from what Christ came for and who he came for. OK, so let's now go to Mark seven. Right. So we've we've kind of established that the dog uh, is symbolic of someone that is eating the crumbs. Right. So so it's symbolic of a bunch of people who are on a lower level, who are basically eating crumbs. Right. So let's now go to Mark seven and we are going to read from 24 to 30. So now we want now what we're going to do is we're going to establish because the, the Bible says she was a woman of Canaan. Right. Now we know that once it says that she's a woman from Canaan, it just means that she was living in that region of the Canaanites, okay, or that region that was called Canaan, right, that's, that's all it means, it doesn't mean that she was actually a, a, an African, right, it just says that she's a woman of Canaan, which normally means she was actually based in that region, but she wasn't actually a real African, okay, so let's go to Mark 7, 24 to 30, and from thence he rose and went into the borders of Tyre and, Sid and Sidon, so that's, that's Christ, and entered into a house and would have no man know it, but he could not be hid, right? So Christ couldn't be hid for a certain woman whose young daughter had an unclean spirit. So this is the same woman in Matthew, in Matthew 15, heard of him and came and fell at his feet. So she heard of him and she fell at his feet, right? The woman was a Greek, a Syrophesian by, nat by nation, and she besought him that he would cast forth the devil out of her daughter. So she was actually an Edomite. She was a Greek person. So let's read it again. The woman was a Greek, a, a Syrophesian by na nation. So she was a Greek Edomite. And she besought him that he might cast forth the devil out of her daughter. Right. So she begged that he would cast the, the devil out of her daughter, right? So 27, and Jesus said unto her, let the children first be filled, for it is not meat to take the children's bread and to cast it onto dogs, right? So Christ was, the, the, the children there that the Bible is talking about are the, chil are the children of Israel. So, so I'll tell you what, let's hold that 
And let's let's precept that by going to Exodus. So we're going to go to Exodus 1, 1. So we're going to go to the very first verse in Exodus, right? So here we are. So we're going to go to the ex Exodus 1, 1. Now, these are the names of the children of Israel, which came into Egypt. Every man and his household came with Jacob, right? So let's read it again. Now, these are the names of the children of Israel. So which children was Christ talking about? He was talking about the children of Israel. So he was talking about the nation of Israel, which came into Egypt. Every man and his household came with Jacob, right? So, so Christ was talking about the children of Israel. Obviously, there's other verses that you can go to to prove that, that the children were the children of Israel. So that's one of the verses that you can go to, okay? Because in Egypt, Moses took us out of, you, of, of, of Egypt, right? Of the bondage in Egypt, right? Moses took the children of Israel out of the bondage in Egypt, right? So let's go back now to Mark. So we read in Mark 7. So we're going to read from 25. For a certain woman whose young daughter had an unclean spirit heard of him and came and fell at his feet. The woman was a Greek and Syrophesian by nation, and she besought him that he might cast forth the devil out of her daughter. She, so she was an Edomite, right? But Jesus said unto her, let the children first be filled, for it is not, so the children was the children of Israel, okay? But it is not meat to take the children's bread, okay? So now we need to know what is the children's bread. So in order to, to precept bread, we're going to go to John 6, and we're going to read from 30 to 34. So we're going to go to the book of John 6. And we're going to read from 30 to 34. They said, therefore unto him, what sign showest thou then that we may see and believe thee? What doest thou work? Our fathers did eat manna in the desert as it is written. He gave them bread from heaven to eat. Then Jesus said unto them, verily, verily, I say unto you, Moses gave you not the bread from heaven. But my father give it you the bread from heaven. Right. So it so the bread comes from heaven for the bread of God is he which cometh down from heaven and give it life unto the world. Right. So life. Right. Then said they unto him, Lord, evermore give us this bread. Right. So the bread. So let's carry on. And Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger, and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. So Christ was the bread of life. So basically what Christ came to do and what Christ came to teach is the bread of life. It came straight from heaven. So that would have been the word. OK, so let's go back again. So we're going to read from 27. But Jesus said unto her, let the children, the children of Israel, first be filled, but it is not meet to take the children's bread, the children of Israel. The children's bread is what Christ came to do, which we met, which we read in Matthew 15, 24. He said, I've only came for the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Right. So is what whatever Christ came to give to the children of Israel is the bread and to cast it onto the dogs, the dogs, uh, in, in that instant would mean the Gentile nations because she was a Gentile. She was a Greek. And she answered and said unto him, yes, Lord, yet the dogs under the table eat of the children's crumbs. So she acknowledged that the Gentile nations were supposed to be under the Israelite nations. OK, so so back then she acknowledged that. OK, and she said unto her, for this is saying, go thy way. The devil is cast out of thy daughter. And when she was come to her house, she found the devil gone out and her daughter laid upon the bed. So Christ cast out the devil uh, from her from her daughter. Right. Because when she was come to her house, she found the devil gone out and her daughter laid upon the bed. Right. So Christ. Uh, Christ uh, cast the devil out or gave an instruction for the devil to leave her daughter. Right. So. So. So we've just established that dogs in that sense means the Gentile nations. OK. And we know when she says crumbs, we know that it's talking about a Gentile nation because an Israelite nation is supposed to be above all nations. So let's go to Deuteronomy 7 and we are going to hit 
couple of scriptures that actually go to the base of what that's saying. So we're going to read Jeremy, uh, Deuteronomy 7, 6. For thou art a holy people unto the Lord thy God. The Lord thy God hath chosen thee to be a special people unto himself above all the people that are upon the face of the earth. Right. So. The Israelite nations or the children of Israel were supposed to be, we are supposed to be above all nations upon the face of the earth. Now, obviously, we we are we are now eating the crumbs because we are not the masters. Right. We are on a, on the bottom level, the lower level of society. Right. In general, I'm talking in general terms. Now, obviously, in Christ, the Christ gives you protection and, and you're no longer under that curse anymore. Right. But in general, we are at the lower ends of society, right? In general, the, the nation of Israel, anywhere you go, is always at the bottom, right? So we are now eating the crumbs from our master's table, okay? But the woman understood that it was supposed to be the other way around, right? That Israel was supposed to be the leading nation, okay? Right. So she so that is Gentile. So now we're going to go to the definitions of dogs in the Bible. Right. So we're going to deal with evil doers. So we're now going to deal with evil doers and we're going to go to about we're going to go to a few scriptures. First, we're going to go to Psalms twenty two sixteen. So we're going to go to Psalms twenty two sixteen. Psalms twenty two sixteen. He that oppresseth the poor to increase his riches and he that give it to the rich shall be surely shall surely come to want. Right. So we we are reading Psalms 22, 16. OK, so now we're going to go to Psalms 22, 16. For dogs have compassed me, the assembly of the wicked have enclosed me. They pierce my hands and my feet. OK, so. But dogs have compassed me, that the assembly of the wicked have enclosed me. They pierce my hands and my feet. Right. So that, that's when Christ was crucified. OK, so the dogs represent evil doers. Right. So they, that represents evil doers. So we're now going to go to Proverbs 26 and we're going to read Proverbs 26, 11. So we are going to read Proverbs 26, 11. As a dog return it to his vomit, so a fool return it to folly. Right. So let's read it again. As a dog return it to his vomit, so a fool return it to folly. So a dog represents an evil doer or a sinner, an unrepentant sinner or a sinner that goes back to sinning again. So so you get those people that uh, have had like a smoking problem all their life. You know, they've been smoking for 20 years and then they stop smoking Right. And they give way to the Holy Spirit and they have stopped and they've been successfully not smoking for six months to a year. And then all of a sudden uh, a devil comes in their life. Uh, it could be a girlfriend, you know, or, or, or a mate comes in their life and then they start smoking again. Right. So the Bible says, let's read it again. As a dog return it to his vomit, so as a fool return it to his folly. So you when you go back to your sin that you've left. You are a fool. OK, you do not go back to sinning. Right. That's something that you don't do. If if the Lord has healed you and has given you the strength to walk away, you don't go back by tempting fate. Right. You stay away from sin. Philippians 3, 2. Beware of dogs. Beware of evil workers. Be aware. Beware of the concision. Right. So I tell you what, let's read from the top. Finally, my brethren, rejoice in the Lord to write the same things to you. To me, indeed, is not grievous, but for you, it is safe. Beware of dogs. Beware of evil workers. Beware of the concision. So the, so basically dogs are evil doers or evil workers, right? Evil workers of iniquity, right? So evil doers, right? So they are Israelites that are evil doers. OK, so let's now precept more on evil doers so we're going to go to isaiah 56 and we're going to read from 8 to 12 right and isaiah talks the prophet isaiah talks about uh the pastors the bishops the shepherds right 
and he calls them dumb dogs and greedy dogs, right? So we're reading Isaiah 56 and we're reading from 8 to 12. The Lord God, which gathereth the outcasts of Israel, said, Yet will I gather others to him beside those that are gathered unto him. All ye beasts of the field come to devour ye, all ye beasts in the forest. His watchmen are blind, they are all ignorant, they are all dumb dogs. They cannot bark, sleeping, lying down, loving to slumber. Yea, they are greedy dogs which cannot, which can never have enough, and they are shepherds that cannot understand. They all look to their own way, every one for his gain from his quarter. Come ye say they, I will fetch wine and we will fill ourselves with strong drink and tomorrow shall be as this day and much more abundant. So let's go back to eight. And the Lord which gathered the outcasts of Israel said, yet I will gather others to him beside those that are gathered unto him. All ye beasts of the field, come to devour ye all ye beasts in the forest. His watchmen are blind. So he's talking about the shepherds, right? He's talking about the bishops and the pastors uh, and, you know, those that puff themselves up with titles, right? Them, them lot, right? Like the commander in chief, you know, all, all the people that puff themselves up with titles, the high priests, they are the shepherds, right? His watchmen are blind. They are all ignorant. They are all dumb dogs. So the watchmen, which are the shepherds, washing, which are supposed to be looking over the flock, are all blind. They don't know anything. Right. They can't see anything. Why? Because they're not really looking out for anything, really. And the Lord has blinded them. He sealed the Bible. They, they don't know the Bible. OK. They are all ignorant. They don't know anything. The Bible is sealed. Oh, it's a mystery. The Bible is a mystery. The Lord works in mysterious ways. Oh, we'll know in the kingdom because the Bible is sealed because they don't know anything. They're ignorant. They are all dumb dogs. They cannot bark. They can't bark. They can't say, oh, you're the Israelite of the Bible. Oh, oh, um, the Lord Christ died only for the nation of Israel. They can't say that. They can't say, oh, well, the promises is for you. Christ is coming back to save you. With all the things that are happening to black people in the media, the pastor and the bishop, he cannot stand up and use the Bible to say, this is where we went wrong. This is where we went wrong. Uh, Christ is coming back. Christ has came. He died for us so that we don't have to worry anymore. Christ will give us that protection that we need. Put on the full armor of God. Christ is coming back and he's coming back for the nation of Israel. He's coming back to take the saints away. They can't say those things and they especially can't tell you that you are the Israelite of the Bible. They can't say that, right? Because they have to include all nations, Right. Like the Bible says they are blind and they are dumb dogs. They cannot bark. They can't say anything. They can't tell you what the Bible says. They can't go from precept to precept. They can't read it line upon line and explain what it's saying. They can't give you the full context of what they're, they're teaching on. They are blind. They are dumb dogs. They cannot bark. Can't tell you anything. Sleeping, lying down, loving to slumber. They cannot tell you what's what's going to happen. You know, they can't tell you what's going to happen. They can't wake you up. You know, wake up. <laughs> they can't do, can't do that. Because they keep, every time you go to church, every time you listen to them, they put you to sleep. People are literally sleeping. Why? Because they're not, the preacher, the pastor is not saying anything. He's not saying anything. He's just saying the same old nonsense. And he's talk, he's using about two or three scriptures out of context. And then he spends most of the time talking nonsense. Right. While well, everybody falls asleep, they are blind. They are ignorant. They are dumb dogs. They cannot bark, sleeping, lying down, loving to slumber. They love to sleep. They love to put you to sleep. Eleven. Yea, they are greedy dogs which can never have enough. The prosperity doctrine is a greedy doctrine because it tells you that you have to tithe. Even the churches that say, oh, we, we're not a prosperity doctrine. We, we are non-denominational. We're Baptists. We are much better than those prosperity ministers on TV, those television evangelists. We're much better than them. You know, oh, this is an Israelite church. We're not like those, those blind, horrible, uh, sleepy Christians. We, we know the Bible. We can give you the historical context of the Bible. No, they're still greedy dogs because they're still telling you that tithing is money. Tithing was never, ever money, you know, 
that they're still telling you that tithing is money. They want your tithe money. They want the offerings and they want more and more offerings on top of it. They are greedy dogs. And then they do the telethon. They do the telethon and love world. They do the telethon where they have all the greedy, all the greedy pastors. Uh, uh, they try to ease your money out of your pocket willingly because you're deluded into thinking that what they're saying is true. So they ease the money out of your pocket and ease it into their bank account so that they can buy a private jet. $65 private jet. They are greedy dogs which can never have enough. They are shepherds that cannot understand. They don't understand the Bible. All they can tell you is, oh, you can, you should do your confession right now. Let's do your confession every day. You must say to yourself that I will win. I will win. I have favor of God. I am, I am the most favorite person of the most high God. I'm blessed. I'm so blessed and highly favored, you know, but they don't tell you. Oh, it's your sin that is causing you to be in that downward position. It's your sin that is causing you to be diseased, to have diseases. It's your sin that is causing you, that is causing you depression. It's your sin that is causing you to feel that way. They don't tell you that. It's your sin that is causing you to have bad relationships. It is your sin that is causing you to, to never win, but to always lose. Right is your sin that, that makes you feel that way, that confounds you into thinking that way. They can't tell you that. They are greedy dogs. They just want your money. And before tax, they want the tithe, they want the, the, the tithe before tax, 10% before tax. And they say your 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 tithe is over and above your offerings, right? They say the tithe is over and above your offerings. You have to tithe right? The Bible doesn't say that. They are greedy dogs, which can never have enough. They are shepherds that cannot understand. They can't understand basic scriptures. They all look to their own way, every one of his own gain, because they want the big house. They want the big car. They want to be something in this world. They want the private jet and the materialism. It's called the prosperity doctrine. From his quarter, Come ye say they, I will fetch wine and we will fill ourselves with strong drink and tomorrow shall be as this day and much more abundant. OK, so there's two two sets of dogs in the Bible, two main sets of dogs, the evildoers and the Gentile nations. OK, so let's now deal with shameless dogs. Right. So we are now going to go to the Apocrypha. And we are going to read Ecclesiasticus 26, and we are going to read from 22 to 26. And harlot shall be accounted a spittle, but a married woman is a tower against death to her husband. A wicked woman is given as portion to a wicked man, but a godly woman is given to him that feareth the Lord. A dishonest woman contemneth shame, but an honest woman will reverence her husband. A shameless woman shall be counted as a dog, but she that is shamefaced will fear the Lord. A woman that honoreth her husband shall be judged wise of all, but she that dishonoreth her him in her pride shall be counted ungodly of all. Right. So let's go back up to 22. A harlot shall be accounted as spittle, but a married woman is a tower of against death to her husband. So if you're with a whore. Someone who goes from man to man to man to man to man to man to man, you know, that's a whore, right? That's a whore. That's a whorish woman, okay? A permanent girlfriend. She's always a girlfriend. Why? Because she's never in the relationships long enough. Because she's going from man to man to man to man. She'll sleep with you in a heartbeat, right? That's the type of person she is, a whore, right? So she is like spittle. But a married woman is a tower against death to her husband. But to be married to one man and stay married, literally staying with a man for many years, right? For all of his life, for knowing, knowing that being married is when you go in a woman. When you go in a woman, the Bible says you become her husband and she becomes your wife. That is biblical marriage. That's the consummation of marriage. And once you have sex with a woman, you are not supposed to leave. Anything else is adultery after that okay 
A wicked woman is given as portion to a wicked man, but a godly woman is given to him that feareth the Lord. So if you're a wicked man, if you're a whoremonger of a man that goes from woman to woman to woman to woman, your whole life is about lust. You know, you, you dwell on lust. You're watching porn. You know, everything is about lust. You see a woman and you're lusting in your heart. How many ways can you get her? And, and you're not actually dealing with your lust. You're not actually stamping out your lust. You know, you're not actually, you know, every man lusts to a certain extent, but it's like with everything in life, you know, you understand what the Bible says in terms of lust. So therefore, the Holy Spirit is there to strengthen you against that lust. So therefore, the, the thought, as soon as a thought pops into your head, it pops back right back out. You don't you don't meditate on lust, because if you meditate on lust, you would eventually start watching porn and then you would start doing the actions that are in your mind or your heart. Your heart represents your feelings, your inner man. OK, a wicked woman is given as portion to a wicked man, but a godly woman is given to him that feareth the Lord. So if you're a good man, a righteous man, the Lord will give you a righteous woman. Now, the Bible says whatsoever you whatever you sow, you reap. So if you sow wickedness, if you sow being a whoremonger, you will reap a whore. If you sow uh, if you saw discord amongst the brethren, then you will and you looking for a, a husband, the Lord will give you the worst husband ever. You know, he would allow you to meet the worst husband ever. You won't have the protection against that. Right. So a wicked woman is given as portion to a wicked man. But a godly woman is given to him that feareth the Lord. A dishonest woman contemnates shame. So if you're a dishonest woman, you're a shameful woman. If you're a perpetual liar, everything is a lie. You're a compulsive liar. Everything is a lie. You, 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 you sow discord among, amongst the brethren. You're a false witness. You have a lying tongue. You, 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 you meditate on evil, doing evil things to other people. Then... You are a shameful woman, a dishonest woman, but an honest woman would reverence her husband, a woman that is above board, an honest woman, a loving woman, a kind woman, a virtue, a woman that wants to be a virtuous woman or a virtuous woman is one that reverence her husband. Reverence just means respect her husband. A shameless woman shall be counted as a dog. So here, here, so here is the scripture that deals with dog. So a shameless woman is is an ungodly woman, an unrighteous woman, a woman that hates her husband, despises her husband, a hoary woman, a devil. A shameless woman shall be counted as a dog, but she that is shamefaced will fear the Lord. So if you if you are not a shameless woman, the opposite of a shameless woman is a shame faced is is that uh, but she that is shamefaced will fear the Lord, right? So if you if you honour your husband, if you do the, the, the exact opposite to a shameless woman, then you will, then, then that means that you fear the Lord. OK, that's that's what it means. It means that you fear the Lord. And that's the type of woman that you should be looking for. Any man should be looking for a man that fears the Lord and vice versa. Any woman should be looking for every woman should be looking for a man that fears the Lord, right? A woman that honoureth her husband shall be judged wise of all, but she that dishonoureth him in her pride, right? So if the woman is prideful, she doesn't want to submit, she doesn't want to be the helpmeet, doesn't want to be the pill of rest, doesn't want to submit generally to her husband and manage the house as she's supposed to do and take care of the kids as she's supposed to do and doesn't want to obey her husband, then she shall be counted as a dog, right? She's, she dishonoreth him in her pride, shall be counted ungodly of all. So if she's ungodly of all, she is a shameless woman, she's a dishonest woman, and she is a wicked woman, and she is a dog, okay? So, so we've established that, that there's two type, two sets of dogs in the Bible. So you have the Gentile nations, which basically means the Gentiles are supposed to be underneath the Israelites. OK, so that's why in the scriptures that I read earlier, it says the crumbs under the master's table. Right. So it's just symbolic of Gentiles being underneath the Israelites, okay? But obviously now it's it's turned the other way around because everything is upside down, right? So now the Gentiles are on top and the Israelites are at the bottom. So the Israelites now become the dogs, you know, for lack of a better term, right? So 
Let's now go back to Revelations. Now we have understanding of what dogs mean. And we're going to go back and we're going to read it again. So four without our dogs. OK, so it's read from 14 again. Blessed are they that do his commandments. Whose commandments? Christ's commandments, which are God's commandments, okay? That they may have right to the tree of life. The tree of life is eternal life. It's the kingdom of heaven, okay? And may enter in through the gates into the city. Which city is the kingdom of heaven, okay? For without our dogs, so outside they are dogs. Dogs represent evildoers and the Gentile nations, okay? Because the Gentile nations were never given the law, right? The Gentile nations were never given any of the covenants to do. Now, obviously, it's a good thing for them to do the new covenant, right? That's, that's, that, 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 that sh everybody should be doing that, really. But primarily, Israel was given the two contracts, okay? So it's the Gentile nations and the evildoers, those who work iniquity, those that are unrighteous, unrepentant sinners, okay? And sorcerers, so, that, so the unrepentant sinners would be the greedy dogs, and the dumb dogs, which are your shepherds, your pastors, and everybody that returns to their own vomit. Those that refuse to repent and become righteous and those that return to their own vomit. So, And the shameless woman as well. How can we forget that? The shameless woman, which is an evil, unrighteous woman that will not help her husband and reverence her husband. They are all dogs. And sorcerers, sorcerers mean those that work witchcraft. And whoremongers means... Men that go from women to women to women to women. A woman, a wife, his wife cannot trust her husband because her husband just goes from woman to woman to woman to woman, bed to bed to bed to bed to bed. And we all know those those men out there that do that kind of thing. You know, they always have a different girlfriend. They're always changing up their girlfriend because they have a bit of money in their pocket, right? So they, they are whoremongers and murderers, people who do abortion unrepentant sinners who think abortion is fine no it's not fine it's murder okay and those who murder others you know you take an innocent life you are supposed to try everything possible to preserve life those police officers that go around killing black people right they are murderers and if you're an unrepentant murderer in fact you're a member of another nation you go around killing an israelite you're in big trouble with the most high right <laughs> Very big trouble with the Most High. And if you're a brother murdering another brother and you're an unrepentant sinner, right? Because that's wicked. <laughs> you will not see the kingdom of heaven. And idolaters, those people that worship other nations' gods and whosoever love it and make it a lie. So if you use the Bible or you misuse the Bible to delude yourself into thinking or you, you listen to a pastor who is a prosperity pimp, or an Israelite uh, 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 who tells you that we're still under Moses and how Christ only died for the sacrificial law and how we still have to do the 613 laws, you know, that kind of stuff. That's a lie. That's not true. Right. And and for those in the Christian church that, that believe in all the foolishness that they believe in church, you know, they close their eyes and see Caesar Borgia and they follow in. Uh, the doctrine of that particular doctrine, which is a false doctrine, those are those that love it and those that make it a lie. So you love a lie and you like upholding a lie. Why? Because it elevates you. If you're a woman and you're in these churches, you love hearing how how much of a victim you are. If you're a man and then you're in these churches and you like hearing a life story about how Bad things have happened to you and when you were a child, this happened to you and that happened to you and, and how you can't stop it now. You're 30 years old, 40 years old, 50 years old and you're still banging on about what happened to you when you were 10. I mean, come on. <laughs> and then you go to these churches, the churches pat, pat you in the back and say, oh, we're praying for you. We're praying for you. You're so bad. What happened to you? You're such a victim. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> brothers and sisters i hope you were edified and i hope you understand what dogs now mean in the bible brothers and sisters shalom